Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Over-the-Air Power Measurements. In this presentation, we'll introduce the basic concepts and methods involved in making over-the-air power measurements using RF power sensors. Let's start with a brief overview of RF power measurement. Measuring the power of a signal is one of the most fundamental tasks in RF design, debug, and production. Although power can be measured with many different instruments, the most accurate and cost-effective way of doing this is using an RF power sensor. In addition to simply measuring power, some types of power sensors have additional functions, such as the ability to generate a power versus time trace. This is helpful, for example, when viewing the envelope of a pulsed or other time-varying signal. Most traditional RF power measurements are conducted measurements. In other words, our power sensor is connected to the source or the device under test using a cable. Conducted measurements are simple, inexpensive, and reproducible, and are the preferred methodology for the vast majority of RF power measurements. However, many newer applications require that power measurements be made over the air, or OTA. This includes some of the newer flavors of Wi-Fi, such as 802.11ad and 802.11ay, 5G operating at FR2 or in the so-called millimeter wave bands, and automotive radar. All of these applications operate at extremely high frequencies, and this makes a PCB or a coax-based connection impractical. In addition, many of these applications also use something called beamforming. This means that in addition to the magnitude of the transmitted power, we're interested in the direction of the power as well. A traditional OTA power measurement setup includes a single-channel RF power sensor, a horn antenna for collecting the radiated signal, an RF cable, and any necessary adapters. Although this method has been used for many years, it does present some significant challenges. First, there's the issue of signal attenuation from the horn, cable, and adapters. This attenuation can be substantial, especially for the high-frequency applications mentioned earlier. And although they usually have very good directionality, horn antennas have a limited frequency range over which they can be used. This traditional approach also requires a dedicated sensor per antenna, so beamforming or other multi-channel measurements can quickly become very expensive. And finally, a system calibration is required to precisely determine the losses and other frequency-dependent effects. An alternative approach for OTA power measurements is to use a so-called integrated antenna module. In an integrated module, a wideband antenna is combined with an integrated diode detector so that power is measured directly at the antenna, with no need for RF cables or adapters. The module output is a non-RF analog signal. Furthermore, an integrated antenna module can be fully calibrated at the factory over its entire frequency and level range, removing the need to perform system calibrations. And finally, these integrated modules are significantly less expensive than having a horn antenna and sensor per channel. This increases scalability and allows better spatial resolution in beamforming measurements by increasing the number of measurement positions. But before we discuss beamforming measurements, let's start with a more basic case of a general over-the-air power measurement. There are two main applications for general over-the-air power measurements. The first of these is measuring the transmit power of a device under test. In this case, our OTA power sensor is placed a given distance from the dust transmitting antenna and power is measured. In most cases, the result will be adjusted by the path loss between the dust transmit and the sensor's receive antenna. The second generic case is calibration of the dust receive power. Here, we want a specific power at the dust input, so we place a sensor at the dust position and then adjust the source power until the desired receive level is reached at that location. Now that we've covered general over-the-air power measurements, let's talk about the more specific case of beamforming. Beamforming involves controlling the direction of radiation in order to maximize the power at the receiver and or to minimize power in other locations. The ability to direct or concentrate transmit power in one direction is particularly important at high frequencies, where path loss and attenuation are also quite high. Beams are usually created using so-called phased array antennas that consist of multiple elements, meaning there's no single RF connector between transmitter and antenna. Note that beam forming may be used to create more than one beam, and that a beam may be either stationary or may move, often in response to the ambient RF environment or other factors. In all cases, the only way to accurately and reliably quantify beam forming, that is, both magnitude and direction, is using over-the-air power measurements. So how do we verify the performance of transmitted beams? Unlike the earlier case of general over-the-air power measurements, multiple antennas or sensor modules are needed to test beamforming. The methodology itself is fairly intuitive. 
If a beam is directed towards a specific antenna module, that module will show the highest average power of all the modules. We can also arrange the antenna modules in two main ways. Either all in one plane, as shown here, when making a two-dimensional measurement, or in more than one plane for a three-dimensional measurement that can measure elevation as well as azimuth of the transmitted beams. So in summary, measuring power is one of the most fundamental tasks in RF design, test, and debug. Although most RF power measurements are conducted measurements, over-the-air measurements have become more important due to the introduction of technology such as millimeter wave 5G, automotive radar, and the newer versions of the 802.11 wireless LAN standards. All of these technologies operate at very high frequencies, meaning higher loss between transmitter and receiver. Many of the devices implementing these technologies do not have discrete attachment points for making conducted measurements, and often beamforming is used to overcome the challenges of propagation at these very high frequencies. Traditionally, over-the-air measurements were made using horn antennas that were connected to a dedicated sensor using a cable, but this configuration is expensive, doesn't scale well, and only works over a very narrow frequency range. Integrated modules, consisting of an antenna and diode, are designed to address these limitations, particularly for high-frequency beamforming applications. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Over-the-Air Power Measurements. Thanks for watching.